Greetings everyone, this is Danny from hardtravel.com and I'm currently on board the beautiful Oceana Serena. She just finished an incredible, massive, multi-million dollar reimagining and she is in beautiful shape. They pretty much took every single space in the entire ship down to, to the base steel and they redid them all, rooms and public areas. And I can't wait to show you all of the evolutions and revolutions that they've done with the R-Class ships. Personally, this is my favorite class of ship in the entire world. I've spent over 200 days cruising on the R-Class ships and I've actually been on all eight of them and I really, really love it. And so I love to see as each cruise line does something slightly different with it, what they do with it. And I really think Oceana's hit it out of the park with this reimagining of the ship. So now I wanted to point out right below me is the pool deck. So we're up here on deck 10. I've got the library just behind me for reference. And as we continue on, you're going to see that you have the, the two whirlpools. So a lot of this was redone. They, they resurfaced the decks. Uh, they put in new tiles and things like that. But the footprint is still exactly the same on the pool deck here. But what I love is they have this mix of these huge day loungers here. The padding's about that thick. And then they also have all of the loungers uh, throughout the entire deck. And they put this really nice cozy uh, top to it. And then there's always towels on there. So of course, it's the mark of a luxury cruise line, which Oceana is. Um, just back for, for point of reference once again, and we'll see that in a bit, is down there you're going to have the, uh, the Waves Grill. Finally, the Waves Bar, which is going to be the pool bar on board. So we'll get to that when we head down to the pool deck in just a few minutes. But right now we're going to take you in to one of the most beautiful spaces on the ship where you get an incredible view looking out the front. All right, so now I'm heading up to deck 11 forward. So just behind me is going to be the pool deck. And as you come up here, you notice that they do have more um, lounge chairs. Once again, nice and padded with these really nice like terry cloth towel tops on there that they uh, you know, wash and change out every day. You've got this great uh, shuffleboard area up here. Um, so a lot of the different companies with our class have really you know used these spaces differently. But what I love that Oceana did is they put in this mini golf course. So the whole ship is meant to be country club casual. And how can you be at a country club without at least a miniature golf course? So a lot of my favorite cruise members start and uh, and finish on a golf course uh, usually later on in the evening so I figure I'll, I'll give it a little try but let's see proper read on that have to work on it maybe after you know 15 30 days on here I'll get it yeah bounce off the rock and yeah that was strategy all along I'm pretty sure that's hole number two but I'm just gonna pretend that it's a par two so there we go. But uh, they've got these putters over here, balls that you can grab anytime that you want. And they even have the scorecards over there as, as well, which is a lot of fun. So as we continue on around the front, what you can see is where the miniature golf course is, is actually looking out the front of the ship and has some of the most unbelievable views on the ship as well, because we're right above the, the bridge and the lounge right now. So as we continue on, what you're gonna see is more miniature golf here. So it looks like that's hole five and six, wraps all the way around there, you've got seven, eight and nine. So you've got a nice little nine hole miniature golf course up here. And then as we continue on, you're going to have more chair uh, padded deck chairs as well. So really, this is just a nice space. If you love the sun, it's a perfect space for you. Maybe in the evening or you want to go play a little miniature golf. It's great for that as well. But uh, on a ship this size, which is not massive, it's nice to have a couple different spaces where you can really separate out and have little different experiences while you're on board. All right, so now I'm headed on to the pool deck area here. So the first place I wanted to point out is this is the outdoor smoking area on board. Right now, they're, the ship's in refueling, so you can't smoke uh, currently, but this is kind of a, it actually ends up being a really social place on just about every cruise. And then of course, the heart and soul of any pool area is of course the pool bar. So this is a great pool bar. This is Waves. You see they have uh, you know every bit of alcohol that you could possibly imagine. And they also have those uh, you know the copper glasses for mules and things along those lines. So it's really an upscale experience and they have enough servers on the pool deck at all times to make sure that you get what you want. So that makes a big difference to me so you're not waiting for a lot of time. They also are going to have pool uh, parties and things like that. So of course classic 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 is ping pong at sea my wife and i have played many many hours of ping pong on the r class ships and then as we walk through the pool deck you'll see that it's pretty easy to maneuver around but they have a ton of these uh these loungers here they all have extra uh, padding on there and then like i mentioned they have these really nice towel based like terry cloth um uh lounge chair covers so that you feel really really comfortable and then out by the pool out by the hot tub they're gonna have these huge pool towels as well i love that they have them out there it makes a big difference and then one of my all-time favorite things on this deck for sure would be these great day beds and loungers here. So I'm gonna, well, do I have to finish the tour or just go to? <sighs> All right, well, anyway, there's lobster at the end of this tour, so I'm gonna keep going.
So as you can see, they have quite a few of these loungers. Um, over in the corner there, they have some other oversized loungers that look out at the side of the pool. They have them uh, throughout that way. And then there's some other couches over here. This has been one of my favorite spots on the r class ships. I have so many incredible memories of us uh, hanging out here, relaxing, especially in the night on an eight night crossing, but tell that story later another time. But one thing that they did with the renovation, which was really nice, is they expanded um, the, the cafe area. So sometimes, you know, well, a lot of times people want the casual option on board. And so it, I'll show you in just a minute, it's an amazing place, but they've expanded the seating there and then over here and then also put even more again uh, along the wall. So you'll see as we head in here that this is a really, really fantastic space. They have this huge barbecue area. So when, it, when it's nice and warm outside and the ship's going, they can put this barbecue, have an open air barbecue and it's a really, really special event. So everything is made to order, of course. Right here, you've got the great, huge outside grill. During the re-inspiration, they totally redid this, put in this beautiful new countertops here and underneath. Um, and then as we head on, I'll continue over this way. Um, you'll see that the gentleman there has an iPad now to take your orders, which expedites it completely. So basically, you just come over here, you order from him, you tell him what you want from this great menu. Surf and turf, so you can have you know lobster and filet mignon out here uh, on, on the deck. That's something that's unique and not available on most cruise ships, especially in the casual areas. So you also have this great fruit bar, there's some cheese, always fantastic freshly baked breads, and then more veggies over here. And then over here, this space is completely new, redone, reimagined, and in a beautiful, beautiful uh, shape. And I love it because this is where you can find all of the ice cream, which makes me really, really happy. Uh, but on top of it, every single morning, they have a full smoothie bar here. Um, and I love that. I just got off a, a Oceana cruise a couple weeks ago, and that was one of my favorite things, is getting my smoothie, my coffee in the morning, hanging out on the, on the Terrace uh, Cafe. I'll, I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, but I love sitting out there, and I love sitting out here because it's such a relaxed way to not have to, to worry about anything go order, sit back, relax, and just enjoy the pool atmosphere. All right, so now I'm heading into the Terrace Cafe, which is the casual dining buffet restaurant on board the ship. In fact, most of my time on our class ships, and once again, I've spent a ton of time on our class ships, I, I dine in here. It's such a great option, and then, you know, steak and lobster can't beat that. So right when you walk in here on the left, you'll see that they have this great Ely espresso maker. And they also have the uh, the arrow water. So you can distill or sparkling water complimentary throughout. Um, right there, he's uh, getting ready to make an Ely coffee, which I will be enjoying in just a few minutes. It's my favorite in the entire world. Now, one of my favorite stations and probably the most important, of course, right now is pizza. Can't go wrong there. And then we're gonna continue on back and you'll see the buffet. So right here, you've got some grab and go salads. They'll toss whatever you want for you. Um, you've got some uh, oven roasted turkey getting ready to carve. So all along here is gonna be the hot foods and then in the back is gonna be, well, my favorite station of all time, of course, which is the desserts. They always have a fantastic assortment of breads as well. And of course, one of the signatures of Oceana, everything is made from scratch on board. They call themselves the finest, say that they have the finest cuisine at sea and I tend to agree um, on all my experiences on board. So now you've got the hot stations back here. One thing that you can always get is steak and lobster grilled to order. How's it going? Mr. Steak, Mr. Lobster, they'll you know, get to know me and spend a lot of time with me as, uh, as you can tell. <laughs> but I also love that they have a pasta station here where you can uh, make it to order as you well. Right now they've got pesto and red sauces. So in the back, got some cold cuts, they'll make sandwiches. Um, you got some salads and things like that uh, right here. And then of course on the other side, the identical twin sister, the dessert bar, my happy place. Um, I did want to point out they have another carving station over here, so make sure you check out both sides. Um, and then, yeah, wow, that's a pretty incredible roasted steam chip. Amazing, and then of course, a place that I can't not talk about, which is the Gelato Shop, Gelato Station. Complimentary, of course, on board, and they have a great, uh, really large assortment, and it changes out every single day. Lemon Tart would be my pick out of here, uh, just saying, personally. So one of the things that I did notice is, uh, I, I've not noticed it on the other R-Class ships, so I think they put this in on the renovation, but they added another drink station here, and they moved the one from down there, so it really opened up the space and added a ton of space all the way down here, which also added some more seating as well. But what really makes this casual restaurant, in my mind, better than any on board, any other class of ship, is this Terrace Cafe. So I've spent a lot of my life on board the R-Class ships. In fact, I have now been on all eight of them. I love them dearly. My wife and I have cruised on them. I've spent a couple hundred days sailing on them. And this is one of my favorite spaces where I always go. So you've got some covered uh, dining here, of course, and it looks like they extended it out just a little bit here. Um, just for reference, those of you guys who are interested, Azamara put in a really large bar there. They put in more seating. So not quite sure uh, you know, which one you like better. To me, having the extra seating, I think, is a really big bonus. Uh, and then, of course, this area off the back, some of my favorite cruising memories are sitting right here, you know, sailing by Capri, uh, sailing through the, the Baltic. It's really, really a special place. I love the aft facing rooms. And then of course, I love sitting out here and relaxing and taking it all in. Having a fantastic coffee in the morning here is, is where you're probably gonna find me on board the ship. All right, so now I'm headed into Horizons Lounge. There's several spaces on board that are meant to kind of feel like a different part of the house. This really is kind of the big 
comfy living room area. It's where they're going to do high tea, um, where they do quite a few different things. But uh, before I did, I just wanted to mention that in, in addition to the Ely Espresso Bar, let me go to those, um, they also have these machines throughout. So um, my cameraman, Taylor, absolutely loves a latte. So I'm going to go ahead and make him a cappuccino because that's what they have on here. So you're welcome and I'm sorry. Um, but once again, this is all complimentary here. They've got a great selection of tea as well and we'll come back for that. So as we continue on into the lounge area, it's really dominated by you know these 180 degree windows that come all the way around. Um, and also on one side, you're going to have this big bar. And then on the other side, uh, you're going to have the uh, the dance floor uh, with where, where all the musicians are going to set up and, and play throughout the, uh, the entire cruise. So this is a great bar. It's great because you get to be part of the action. If they're having karaoke up here or doing something else, you get to be part of it. But um, you, the bar bartender actually gets the best view in the entire house. Well, not of me, but of uh, looking out the, uh, the front of the ocean. So one of the things that I've noticed with some of the other ships when they've adapted it is that they've kind of turned the space so it's, it's out front a little bit more. So when I head down, what you really, really start to see is the front of the ship. So I've been in this class of ship all over the world. One of my favorite memories was being in the regatta uh, in this very spot, looking out at the glacier in Alaska. And so we're in these seats right in the front, looking out, had this unbelievable view. We kept seeing the glaciers calve left and right. Um, but uh, once again, I have a lot of great memories here. And then also on the dance floor as well, because this is going to be, um, you know, Oceana not, doesn't always have really lively, you know, nighttime <laughs> experiences. They have great shows, great entertainment. Um, but some cruises, you're going to get a little bit more action up here and some cruises you're not. But some of my favorite memories were up here singing, dancing into the night. And uh, of course, I've been known to do a little bit of karaoke once in a while. And also I've won uh, quite a few trivias in here. So when you're ready, you just let me know. But we're going to continue on through um, the lounge here. You see that they have a kind of an assortment of seating. So they've got this huge, um, you know, mega couch here. And then they also have all the chairs here that you can kind of move around. So when I've had larger groups, you know, sometimes we put two, three, four of those together um, and then have, uh, have a really nice, uh, you know, nice seating area. One thing that I did want to point out while we're up here and there's a bar behind me is that alcohol is not included on Oceana Cruises. So sometimes they'll have a promo uh, where they'll have, have, have it included or they'll have one of the beverage packages as an option. But for the most part, um, it's not. But they have several different beverage packages to choose from. Make sure that you check out our video on that if, you have, if you're interested in seeing what that's all about. One of the things that I love is they've put in this smoking lounge that is enclosed. So this door closes and you can hear that there's extra ventilation in, in here as well. And there's also a window that opens up to the outside. So that doesn't exist on some of the other ships where you can get additional ventilation. Um, but one thing that I noticed on some of the bigger ships, the Marina and the Riviera, is that this space was open. And so it kind of flowed into the lounge a little bit. I didn't smell that whatsoever at all. So this is great for those who want to smoke. And it's also great for those who don't like the smell of smoke uh, while, they're, while they're traveling. So now I am front, in front of Red Ginger. So this is the space amongst all other spaces on the ship where I think you're gonna see the most dramatic transformation. When I come in here, um, this is the only R-Class ship on, in the world, of course, in our Oceanus fleet that has Red Ginger on it. They just put it in, they totally redid this incredible space and it is beautiful. You see all the incredible reds here. Of course, it is an Asian fusion restaurant. It's usually um, everybody's favorite when they're on board the Marina and the Riviera, so I know why they brought it over here. Um, but uh, it's got an incredible menu. It's super, super delicious and we love that they have it on the R-Class ships now. So as you head in you see of course the beautiful red ginger plants that they always have they have them live on the tables um, right now we're on a turnaround so they're redoing all of this kind of stuff um, but as i walk through this space it's almost unrecognizable to me as to what it used to be or what it is on the other oceana ships um, where you're going to have um, you know you're, you're going to have toscana in this spot so it goes from a very very relaxed um, you know italian to completely completely beautiful, bright colored Asian fusion. Absolute favorite place to sit in this restaurant. And then the, we'll take you next door to the steakhouse as well. Um, but my favorite place to sit is in the very, very back. So if you're in one of those butler level suites, make sure that you talk to them about that. This is something that they can handle for you and take care of for you. Um, but when you're sitting here, you have this incredible view out the back of the ship that's just above the terrace that's right below it. So these are my favorite spaces to, to sit on any cruise ship. One kind of cool thing is as you continue on through here, there are two different specialty restaurants. So on this ship, what they did is they fused together the old one where they had Toscana, which was Italian, and they had um, the Polo Grill, which was a steakhouse. They put them together to create Tuscan steak. So right when you actually go around the corner here, you'll notice a completely different change of decor. And now we're in the Tuscan steak house. So what they did is they took that Italian menu and the steak menu, put it together. Who doesn't love that? Um, and now you have more options because they added red ginger as well. For these smaller R-Class ships, when you're sailing for a long time, it's great to have several different options to choose from for dining. Of course, you're gonna have the main dining room and they're gonna change that up all the time. But having, you know, in my mind, essentially, essentially three specialty uh, dinings where they used to have two in the past, I think is a huge improvement. 
All right, so now I'm the front part of Tuscan steak. I did want to point out these are great. They have these new lamps that charge that they added in. They're really heavy, and so you have this great ambiance at the tables. Um, but this is a huge bar. I love sitting here, especially having a cocktail before dinner. You'll notice they have wine behind it, wine all the way on the side as well. They have an amazing wine collection on board the ship, and you would expect that from a cruise line that has the finest cuisine at sea. My favorite seats in here are, you know, I love sitting on the windows. That's always a great option. I really prefer the very, very back in here as well. So once again, make sure that you talk to your butler about that. All right, so now I'm headed into the library. It's a really beautiful space and it's incredibly cozy. Uh, it has an amazing collection. There's a huge library collection in here. And personally, I've spent a ton of my time cruising on the R-Class ships in this very space. So you see they have this huge overstuffed, over padded uh, furniture in here totally got redone with the renovation. Um, and the whole idea with this ship was to kind of create a homey atmosphere. So right here, you've got the faux fireplace, of course, and the couches that are all around it. So you can sit, relax, and have kind of that, that imaginary feeling that you're at home. Then again, if you take one of the owner suites or Vista suites, they have kind of the same thing, and they're actually relatively just below this as well. So throughout this, they've tried to create these small private spaces where you feel really cozy and really, really comfortable. This part over here, they do have a, a computer. There's not really a, a full um, internet cafe anymore, but they've got a few computers up here if you would like to use them. And then they've got this great selection of uh, Lonely Planets and other kind of travel research books here where you can learn about the places that the ship is actually traveling. And one of the things I love about going on one of the Oceana's R-Class ships is I look at this section and you kind of get an idea of where they've been and especially where they've been recently. So here you've got Australia and China, um, South, South America. So this ship has been all over and will continue to cruise all over the world. So now we're headed into the fitness center. The first space that we're gonna be in is kind of an aerobic space here. They've got all the spin bikes over there by the window. Uh, they've got the yoga mats. They have complimentary classes throughout. Over here, you've got the uh, the mirror there and you've got a, a dance bar as well as towels throughout. And I love that they have uh, sports drink. A lot of times they'll have smart waters too and cold water for you to grab as you want. And then of course, all the towels that you would need and these uh, wipes uh, as well. Uh, gotta stay safe on a cruise ship. And this is one of those places where people touch a lot of things. So you wanna wipe it down every single time. Before we head on to the other part, I just wanted to point now, this is normally where you would go into the spa. This is one of the spa entrances. They're just finishing up a little construction on there. So we're going to show you some of the spaces, but the flow is going to be a little bit different than it might be uh, once, once that's completely done. So now we've headed into really the main part of the fitness center. You have all the treadmills lined up there with incredible views out the side of the ship. You've got all your machines over here uh, facing the mirror. So you actually get great views of the, uh, the ocean as well. Got a drinking fountain here, several other different kinds of machines, and a, and a pretty good assortment of, of free weights that go all the way up to 60 pounds, which is uh, pretty big for a, a cruise ship, and I think it's uh, one that you're generally going to find on a luxury cruise ship. And then once again, finally, you've got a few more machines here. You've got a leg press machine, um, and then you've got uh, this entrance area that's going to go out to the thesolotherapy pool and the relaxation area. So once again, this space is a little bit different on all the R-Class ships, but the signature is that they have this huge spa in the middle, and they always have these great oversized, overstuffed loungers here with, once again, a beautiful view out the front of the ship. So I'm just going to walk up here for a second. Um, it looks like they redid all the tiles here. It looks really beautiful, and they probably replaced all the equipment in here as well. And what I just wanted to point out is from here, I can actually see over. This is straight out the front of the ship, and to the side, you've got the Horizons Lounge right there above. So I'm going to continue on down the other side. You see they have these really nice, large large uh, two-person day beds over here as well. And then there's also showers on either side. So one way to get in is the way that we came. You know, you can get in, in or out that way, but you can also get in or out through the men's or women's changing rooms. We're not gonna go in there right now, but I did wanna point out that they have a uh, sauna in there, uh, steam room, which I really, really like, and it's complimentary for all guests. All right, so the spa is currently going through its final changes to switch over from Canyon Ranch to the Aquamar Spa. So right here, I'm in the heart of it. You've got several different treatment rooms. Uh, the entryway is just over there. And on the far side, you're gonna have another treatment room and also you're gonna have the full salon at sea. So you can get manis, petties, uh, anything you can get at a salon at home as well. Uh, but once again, this is just getting finished up. So those spaces are still under construction. So now I'm headed into the card room and you can imagine on a, a ship like this that travels long distances, you're gonna get a lot of card players that love to play bridge and other games in here. So they'll set up tournaments throughout. Um, you can set up your own, of course, as well, but it's a really beautiful space and it got all new furniture. One thing I just wanted to point out is that I like that Oceana has kept this as a public space because on uh, Azamara, they, they converted this room and then the room next door, which we're gonna show you right now, into two spa suites. They are magnificent rooms. I absolutely love them, my clients do as well, but you just kind of have a little bit less space for passengers. And it seems like Oceana has preserved that through this renovation. So the next space is Oceana at Sea. So uh, this is basically the internet cafe. You also have the desk of the uh, internet manager who's gonna help you get on and get all the devices. But it's really, really important to understand how the internet works on board this ship. You're gonna get one complimentary login if you're in a standard room, 
per, per, per sailing. So essentially you can use that login. Um, you can log in and out as many times as you want, but the first time you set it up, you're gonna put in one of the passenger's dates of birth, and that's the one you have to log in throughout. You can switch devices just by logging in on the other device, and it'll say, do you wanna disconnect? You just can disconnect the other person. So you can trade off as much as you want. I'll go from my laptop to my phone. My wife will use her phone as well, and even my daughter will use her, her tablet. But it's important to know that you only get one complimentary. If you need two at all times, I would recommend that you purchase the second and internet package so that you can be logged in as much as you want. But once again, Azamara converted this room over to a spa suite, so you've lost this as public space. But a lot of people want to come up in here, come up here and sit down, type out uh, you know, a nice long uh, email or something like that. But with the complimentary internet, this is a great space to have on board the ship. All right, so now I'm headed into the Serena Lounge. Um, one thing that I do feel in here is that with all these dark woods, you kind of get an idea of what it used to look like throughout the ship. It's gotten really, really light, but in this area, I love that they kept these beautifully dark woods. So this ship used to be the Tahitian Princess. It was actually the R4 way back in the day, then the Tahitian Princess, and then the Ocean Princess, and then the Serena. So I love seeing kind of the things that are similar and different as they, did, as they went through those uh, transitions. So right when you come in here, this is the show lounge. So right here, you're gonna have all the, the tech set up and everything that they need to, to do sound and lights. Okay, you've got the bar that's gonna service uh, the space throughout the entire you know, shows and all the events that they have in here. You're gonna have uh, full production shows in here up on the stage. I'm gonna start walking up there. Um, and they've got the two massive spotlights for that. But they also use this space for all kinds of things. So they, they use it for lectures. That's probably what I've been in here the most for. Um, they use it for bingo, of course. I mean who doesn't love playing bingo on a cruise. And then of course you can see that they do dancing and things like that with live music before shows. So this is a great place to dance, but it's also the stage. So all along the floor here, you've got the little red tape uh, where all the actors have their marks. So they do have a stage here, but this is the much larger part of the stage that all becomes part of the show. So what's really cool about it is being a small ship and super intimate when you're you know, watching the show, this is a seat that I've had quite a few times, you're sitting right here and you're basically in the show and part of it. So it's something that I really, really like. Um, about this ship in general is that it's so intimate that you're always part of almost every single thing that's happening. Where on a bigger ship, um, there might be quite a few different activities and you know maybe you're an ancillary part of it, but you're not really in it. So just outside the Serena Lounge is the casino. So it's not a massive casino, but I like that they have kept it on board. Some of the other cruise lines, uh, like Azamara has gotten rid of it on the pursuit, uh, but it's just, uh, it's interesting to see what they do with the different ships. So it's got all the classic games. You've got roulette, poker, blackjack, and then quite a few different machine options. And uh, one really cool thing about this is uh, um, as you walk through, like this is the main deck on the ship where all the passengers are going to go forward and aft. So on this side over here, um, you've got a great little passageway and I'm going to kind of do a loop around here so you can see what it was. But I wanted to point out that throughout the ship, they've done some amazing artwork. They've really stepped it up and taken it to the next level. Um, that's something that Jack Del Rio really wanted to do with this reimagination, uh, re-inspiration, sorry, is to really kind of take it up to the highest level of luxury that you can. Over here, you're gonna see you have these huge overstuffed couches. You've got some great furniture over here. There's a piano in the corner. I love sitting in this lounge and listening to the piano. In fact, uh, Sammy, Sammy Gold, <laughs> Goldstein is one of our all-time favorites. I went on four or five cruises with him uh, playing the piano over there in the corner. But um, here is the, the lounge area. But this is just really, once again, a very comfortable, relaxed place to hang out on the ship, either before or after a show or before or after dinner. All right, so just outside the Martini's Piano Lounge, you're gonna have the retail. So as you would expect with a high-end cruise line like this, you've got Swarovski, all kinds of high-end brands. So if you wanna shop, this is a great place because it's always gonna be duty-free. They're gonna open when they're out at sea. So if you're buying especially a high-end item, you might save quite a bit of money. So this lounge area is used differently on all the different R-Class ships. But what I see is beautiful new furniture. It's set up, so they're gonna have, uh, looks like four musicians, got a couple uh, violins over there. That's something that's a hallmark of Oceana, that they're gonna have this great live music that's very relaxed throughout and, and really kind of honoring that country club uh, casual atmosphere. So as we continue on forward, uh, what you're going to see is this is right now set up to have the uh, specialty restaurant reservations. Um, so when you when you come on board, that's something that you may want to do right away. It just depends. You can pre-book them. Um, as a travel agent, I do that all the time for my clients, but just something you want to keep in mind. So now I'm heading into a spot that you will find me every single day on this ship, maybe once or twice. So that's the barista's coffee bar. Can I get a latte, please? Sure. Taylor, once again, loves lattes. Gotta keep the cameraman happy, of course. But as we come to this space, you can see that it's it's a beautiful and it's an elegant space. They put in all of this new chandelier work when they did the massive renovation. But what I love about it is they still kind of kept that classic feel where you really know that this used to be the Tahitian princess with all the teak wood and everything like that. So they have a mix of these great couches um, and also these tables and areas like that where you could sit either before or after a meal because the dining room is just here. But it's also just a really great place to sit and relax. 
All right, so now I'm heading into the grand dining room. So this is always uh, gonna be open seating. So everything on, on board Oceana is open seating, of course, except for the specialty restaurants, which you need to pre-assign. So there's a ton of different options here. Of course, this is like a 10 top table. You got twos and fours. Um, I love the signature of the R-Class ships. You got this little middle area that's raised up here and a beautiful, beautiful new uh, chandelier work when they converted this ship over. Um, it really looks beautiful. But once again, another thing that I really appreciate in this space is there's kind of that mix of the old school knowledge of what this ship used to be, um, but this elegant, elegant, um, you know, re-inspiration of it, put in these beautiful uh, Ronald Glass uh, chandeliers over there. So you can see throughout what they did to it, but it's it's just a, an elegant space to start with. So I did want to point out that everything in here is going to be top of the line. You've got the beautiful china. Um, you've got all the fantastic uh, wine glasses and everything like that that are all high end. But once again, with this space, just like uh, several of the other dining spaces on board, my favorite place to dine is going to be in the very, very, very back of the ship. So there's quite a few of these two top tables. My wife and I have had dinner here several times, but quite a few of these where you sit and as you open up the curtains there, you just look out the back of the ship and it's really, really beautiful. So once again, throughout the ship, there's a ton of spaces like that that are really comfy. Right now they're getting, they're, they're serving lunch in here and you can see there's, uh, there's quite a few people, but there's still a ton of open space in here as well. So one of the absolute classic hallmarks of an R-Class ship is the grand staircase. So it's just behind me here. They totally redid it as part of the re-inspiration. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, but right now, what I did is I headed down into the reception area. So there's a couple things that are down here in this space. So as I head over here, um, the first uh, one is they've got the spa desk here set up. So as soon as you board, you can make uh, those reservations. And then over here is another place that's really, really important, which is destination services. So with most Oceana Cruises, most uh, passengers choose the O-Life promotion, where they're going to get several complimentary shore excursions. It's really important important to know that you cannot book those when you get on board. They have to be booked in advance. In fact, I believe they have to be booked at least 14 days in advance. But in addition to that, you can book any of the excursions that you want and they have a ton that don't qualify for the complimentary anyways that are kind of a next level. So this is where you're going to go when you get on board to go through all of that, um, to book them, to change them, to have if you have any questions, they do an amazing job. They're a wealth of knowledge, but just keep in mind that any of the days that you're in port, they're probably not going to be here because they're going to be out leading a tour. So on the other side, uh, you're going to see, you know, very much a mirror image. It's a little bit busier right now because it's boarding day. This area is going to calm down considerably here in just a little bit. All right, so over to the side here, you're going to have the executive concierge. So if you need any of those concierge services, they're the ones to go to. But you can see that it's a really beautiful space. Once again, totally redone uh, from the bottom up went during uh, the renovation, and it looks really beautiful. On the outside area of deck five, which is once again the main passenger deck, you're going to have this great promenade. So the jogging track on the very top does go all the way around. This one does not, but many times throughout the cruise, they'll put chairs out here and it's a really good place to sit, lounge and check out uh, the view. So right now they have them all covered up, of course, because they're, they're in port and they're just turning over the ship today. Uh, but this is going to be a, another place where you can sit back, relax and escape everything on board and really just have a beautiful ocean experience on a classic promenade. Thank you so much for taking your time to join me today on this tour of the beautiful Oceana Serena. She looks absolutely amazing. She was totally renovated. And actually, she was just renovated a couple years ago when she came into the, the Oceana fleet. So whenever you're ready to book a room on this ship or any ship in the Oceana fleet, reach out to Hard Travel. We are your Oceana Cruises experts. We've sailed with Oceana. We booked a ton of it. We know the ins and outs so that we can make sure that you have a vacation of a lifetime at an incredible value.